This is the Axon Simo 4K that turns your smartphone into an on-camera monitor with great features, and now it's available for Android. Let's review that. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching All Limits On channel, and today we're reviewing the Android version of this device, and I've already made a review of the iOS device, so if you have the iOS one, please check the review down in the description below. In my opinion, guys, the biggest advantage of this device is the compactness, because you don't need to bring an on-camera monitor, for example, to your vacation or a trip, and your phone already has pretty big, bright, and color-accurate display. And to me, guys, the biggest advantage of the Exxon Simo 4K for Android and for iOS as well is the compactness and the light weight. Because anyways, you'll be carrying your cell phone with you at all times and everything you need is this little device and an NPF battery and you're ready to go. The device is made out of two parts, the phone clamp and basically the Exxon Simo 4K device itself. On the clamp, you also have a cold shoe mount, which means that you can attach something like a microphone receiver with this. Also in the kit, you'll find the metallic tiltable cold shoe mount. On one side of the device, you'll see the USB Type-C video output, and this device does work with the USB Type-C and the on-off button, as well as the battery status. Axon Simo 4K for Android uses standard NPF batteries and draws not a lot of power. And on the other side, you'll see a 5 volt out and the HDMI in, and it means that you can power other devices with the same NPF battery, for example, a cooling fan for your camera. And of course, guys, the Exxon Simo 4K simultaneously charges your smartphone, so it'll be at 100% juice at all times. The phone clamp is detachable, and you can also use the system with the Raven Eye from DJI, and this is a very important feature for some DJI users. And it's also using a proprietary USB Type-C cable, so guys, make sure you don't lose this cable, because it won't work with other cables. And as you can tell, guys, the Samsung phone is much bigger and brighter compared to the standard Sony FX30 screen. Now we're taking a look at an awesome Axon C app. Here you can see the resolution up to 4K 30 frames per second, then the codec H.264, then we have the audio bitrate 48kHz and 16-bit, and the AAC codec. On the bottom left corner you'll see the vertical mode, and on the top right corner you'll see the record button and the live streaming button. And on the bottom right corner you'll see the control center. So here you can change the video bitrate up to 20 megabits per second, and also the file size limit up to 16 gigabytes. The video files will be stored into your phone's memory, so make sure you have some available space. And also we have the streaming capabilities, so make sure your phone has a very stable connection of your network, and then you can stream to YouTube, Facebook or Twitch with these. And one more cool feature is that you can record or stream with the LUT applied. For example, if you shoot an S-Log3, you can apply the LUT and stream or record with the baked-in look. Then let's walk through the tools, so here we have the black and white image, the next tab is the RGB full color image and then we have the histogram which you can actually pinch to zoom and change the position of the tool on the screen. The same goes for the waveform, you can change the size and the placement of the waveform and the same goes for the vectorscope. You can make it as large as you want basically and what's cool about it is that you can have multiple tools on the screen at the same time and you can readjust the position and the size of those tools. Here you see the focus picking tool and it's also customizable so you can go into the features of different tools and adjust those. So here we have the LUT, so you can import your own LUT. And as you can tell, guys, for each and every function, we have different settings. For example, for the RGB, we can pick the color. For the histogram, we have three types of histograms available. The same goes for the waveform. And we have only one option in terms of the vectorscope. For the focus peaking, we have different options in terms of the level and the color. And the same goes for the zebra. You can change the level of your zebra. We have anamorphic disk squeeze, different audio settings, something like the audio level or the channel splitting to the right, to the stereo or to the left. We also have the image markers, so if you want to shoot at 2.35 aspect ratio, you can enable it right here. We also have different grids, and they are also heavily customizable. And also we have the color range, which can be limited, or the full color range. And finally, you have your overlay image option. It's a very cool feature when you need to record something in a very long period of time. For example, like building or something like this. You take one shot, and then you can overlay the same shot onto your image and recompose it in a month or two months or three months away from the same date and make exactly the same footage and show in the time frame how it changes. Here I'm showing you how the zebra works and also it has the full color tool. And if you hit the triple dot icon you can customize which functions will be in the bottom row and you have the full access to all the options. 
And also this app supports vertical orientation, which is very cool for reels and shorts, and it has all the functionality you need. Now let's compare the in-camera recording at 4K 25 frames per second, 4 to 2 10 bits, compared to Exxon Simul 4K, 4K 25p recorded into the Samsung. And as you can tell, the image quality is really nice and you can use the device for backup if your camera doesn't have dual memory card slots and redundant recording which I'm doing all the time with my Sony ZV-E1. And as you can tell, guys, the image quality is really there and you can definitely use this device for backup. But if you compare the 1080p footage compared to 4K, it is pretty mushy. So I would stick to the 4K up to 30 frames per second when possible. But 1080p as an extreme backup is also pretty much doable. And here is the side-by-side -side comparison of the internal recording in 4K, then to the Axon in 4K and to the Axon in 1080p. And guys, I've been using the Axon Simo 4K in my travels a lot and I really enjoy using this system. It is much better than the Monitor Plus app or the Monitor and Control app made by Sony because the image quality is miles ahead than with those two options. And the price of the Axon Simo 4K is $150, which is comparable to some really cheap monitors, on-camera monitors, but in my opinion, your smartphone has much better and brighter screen and the Axon C app is much more versatile than a lot of the apps that you can find in the actual monitors. So this is it guys, the Axon Simo 4K for Android is out now and if you did enjoy this review, smash the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notifications bell. And right here I have my iOS version of the Axon Simo 4K for you to watch next. Thank you, take care, bye.